Hey everybody, welcome back to the Enduring Faith Podcast. This is Jamie and this is episode 26, which means that I have actually been able to continue this podcast for an entire year, which is so crazy to me. I just never imagined that I would have actually stuck with it every other week for a whole year. So um, coming up around, I think, March 31st will be um, an actual full calendar year. So stay tuned for that. Um, I'll have kind of a year in review um, fun episode next time. But today we're talking about the secret to contentment. I don't know about you, but being content is not always something that comes naturally to me. And there's a lot of things that happen in life and our circumstances really um, just get in the way of feeling content. So let's first talk about um, just the word content. So the opposite, we're going to start with the opposite. The opposite of content is malcontent. And that word means one who bears a grudge from a sense of grievance or thwarted ambition or one who is in active opposition to an established order or government, a rebel. Essentially, if someone is malcontent, they are dissatisfied, right? Um, But man, that sense of grievance. Okay, so suffering, distress, complaining, resistance. These are all words associated with the word grievance. Are you dissatisfied today? Do you have a grievance? Are you suffering? Are you in distress about something? Do you find yourself complaining? Are you resisting something? Or how about holding a grudge? Are you in opposition to something? Maybe a little rebellious? I know I am. I struggle a lot with malcontent. And God has been convicting me about this lately. But now let's look at the word content. So as an adjective, content means in a state of peaceful happiness. And then as a noun, it means state of satisfaction. So how do we get from suffering to satisfaction? or from resistance to resting. So Paul tells us what it is in Philippians 4, verses 12 and 13. Listen, I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. So what's the secret? It's Jesus. How can we do all the things? Jesus. But notice Paul does not say, I can have everything through Christ. He says the word do. I can do everything through Christ. Contentment doesn't come from having more or better things or receiving bigger blessings or blessings at all. The secret to contentment is using the power of Jesus Christ in us to do God's work. That is when you become peaceful, content, satisfied. The past, I don't know, several years (laughs) have been kind of a struggle for me in the area of work. So y'all know I'm a life coach, but my um, nine to five, my, my quote unquote real job is, um, different. It is completely 180 degrees opposite from (laughs) life coaching. And I often wonder like, why God am I still having to stay in this other thing when I know you're calling me to life coaching? Sometimes I can get a little whiny and I complain, um, especially to those who love me the most. (laughs) Don't we do that a lot? We complain oftentimes the most to the people who love us and they probably really get sick of us complaining. Um, Anyway, um, I have a tendency to feel kind of rebellious and resistant about being assigned um, 
tasks in this job that I think are meaningless or um, don't suit me or, um, you know, basically anything that I don't want to do, which is most of the work. <laughs> so I know that this is coming from just a root of selfishness and pride that makes me so malcontent. But God keeps convicting me over and over again about my perspective about work and my priorities and my source of power to be fully content. I have to access the power of Jesus Christ and do God's work no matter where he has me, no matter, no matter how I'm getting paid <laughs> to support my family, whatever I'm doing, wherever he has me, I have to tap into the power of Jesus Christ if I want to be content. Because isn't it true that if you really think about where you are most discouraged today, think for a minute about what you're grumbling about the most and consider, are you working more in that situation or that circumstance out of your own power? Or have you tapped into the power of Jesus Christ like Paul is talking about? Are you malcontent or are you peaceful and content? Just think about it. What power are you tapping into? When we have Jesus at the center and we're accessing that power of Jesus Christ, we start to see his perspective we start to see people around us the way he wants us to see them. And we know he gives us all opportunities to minister to people in every circumstance. We can do his work in every situation that he puts us in. He gives all of us just opportunity after opportunity to be his hands and feet. So we have to consider that and keep our perspective in check, right? We are not in these circumstances to receive something. We're not there to gain earthly satisfaction in these circumstances. Sure, that may come in some circumstances. But when we shift our earthly perspective of pride and greed and selfishness and the need to feel important to an eternal perspective where we can see who's hurting around us, just imagine how that would shift us from being grumbly and malcontent to peaceful, restful, content, maybe even full of joy. Are you feeling malcontent about something? Maybe God is challenging us to just adjust our priorities, stop waiting around for God to give us a new job, a new opportunity, a new husband, <laughs> more important responsibilities, a better house, more money, better car, whatever it is, whatever you're complaining about today. We cannot wait around for contentment. We are content when we choose to tap into the power of Jesus and do what he needs us to do. We're content when we make his work a priority in our lives and we see his people as more important than our wants and desires. Is that challenging you today? It challenges me. If we can stay in alignment with God's assignment for our lives and focus on eternal desires and not just earthly desires, then that, my friends, is where we will find true contentment. So our homework for the next couple of weeks <laughs> is to recognize what are the areas in our lives where we feel malcontent? And then decide what do we need to do to change it? Maybe we're not just going to sit around and wait for God to change the other person or the situation. But maybe there's something that God wants us to do by the power of Jesus Christ in us in order to start feeling content. All right. Think about what Paul said. We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Isn't it interesting how he was talking about that after talking about contentment? See, a lot of times we leave off that first part, right? Everybody always quotes, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. But in the context of what Paul is talking about, he's talking about contentment. 
He's not talking about running a marathon, although you can actually use it for that, of course. But what he's talking about is how to deal in life when things aren't going your way. He's talking about going from grumbling to being content in life, in a life where maybe everything is a little bit bad. <laughs> you know, maybe it's not the amazing, blessed life that we all want and desire so badly. Maybe life kind of stinks right now. But you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength in order to be content. Isn't that powerful? So I just want to say a little prayer for all of us. Um, I just, Lord, thank you for this word today. Thank you, God, for um, convicting me once again to turn to you and use your power to actually do something, do your work so that I can feel that peace and rest that Paul is talking about. Thank you for continuing to guide all of us with your Holy Spirit. Forgive me, Lord, for falling back into malcontent. And help me, please, to stay in alignment with your assignment for my life. I want to focus more on you and your people and less on my own selfish desires and grumblings. And I want to make a difference eternally. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you all so much for listening. Thank you so much for supporting this podcast for the last 26 episodes. I'm just still in shock. I thank each and every one of you for listening. And don't forget, I have the 21 Days and Beyond Attitude of Gratitude devotional and journal out on Amazon. The link is in the show notes. And I would absolutely love, love, love for all of you who already have it and are using it and enjoying it to go to Amazon and write a review. And that way other people that maybe stumble upon it will um, see your review and decide to go buy it too. So thank you all for your support. I just pray that I am able to do the Lord's work and stay in his assignment for my life. And each of these things that I'm doing is just an act of obedience in doing what I feel like he's calling me to do. So thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting me in that. And um, I just, I pray that you are blessed by it and that um, the words I say or the words I write will help you also to come in alignment with your own purpose and step out in faith and start doing the thing that God is calling you to do. And don't forget, if you need help figuring that out, I'm your girl. I love to help women figure out who they are in him, how he created you, and then go figure it out. What are you supposed to be doing? Let's do it together. I'll help you with next steps to take. After each coaching session, you'll have steps and you'll have assignments and you'll go forth and start doing the thing that you are called to do. You can find all my contact information in the show notes and Go follow me on Facebook and Instagram if you don't already. And I'd love to see a message from you if you just have any questions or want to share something about your own walk of faith. I would absolutely love to hear it. So thanks again for listening. And don't forget, the next episode will be the official one-year celebration podcast.